Okay, we're good. Sound ready? Three, two, one. Oh, three, two, two one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Promptus Podcast. I am so excited that you're here today to learn and to grow with us. My name is Gabriel, and I am here with my co-hosts, Chad and Zach. And Zach, just like last week, has the prompt for us today. So I'm going to kick it over to him. I've uh, become the prompt master. <laughs> Chad, Chad Masters, prompt masters. Look me in the it. eyes. That's I'm the great. captain now. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is a this is a prompt that only you guys can answer. Oh, um, and I wanted on. to do this really intentionally because a few people have asked it, and it's really a good opportunity for you guys to tell a bit more of your story. But uh, drum roll, pre- pl- drum roll, pre- drum roll, please. There it is. That's Ready? high quality drum rolls, Wait, baby. Hold on. <laughs> drum roll, drum roll. The prompt for today is how to navigate long distance relationships. Mm. Wow. Oh, okay. wait, Zach, you can talk in this one because our friendship with you is a long distance friendship. Mm. Dang, dude, you took my thing. I was going to make that. I was going to make that the thing after you Dad, guys spoke. Stop anyway, stealing Zach's over. thunder. <laughs> look, at, look me in the eye, Zach. I'm the prompt master now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But uh, boys, who wants to start? Chad, do you want to get thrown in the hot seat, baby? Dude. You can absolutely throw me in the hot seat. Well, well, let's do this. I think before we get into the nitty meat, gritty, the meat and potatoes of it, yeah. let's have uh, a little salad. There we go. Have a little appetizer first. And I think we just tell our stories of long yeah. distance for anyone yeah. who hasn't heard it. Yeah. Do you want to go first, Chad? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can, if you guys would like me to go first. All right. <laughs> then I would so, tell you, baby. There I was, just a small young tight in South Beach. <laughs> so how much of my story should I give or should I just talk about just the long distance portion of it? Um, I mean, I guess cliff notes, to everything, else. You, to everything yeah. else, but yeah, but basically like the long distance version mm-hmm. of, of yeah. you guys meeting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So right. basically I was living in South beach and Tori at the time was miss Florida and she was also living in Miami, Florida, but we both traveled a lot. So whenever we first started talking to each other, it felt like long distance, regardless because we are always somewhere else. We spent so much time on the phone together because we were never around each other. And then she friends on me fast forward a few years, try to connect again. Then she friends with me for a second time. Then fast forward about 10 months and then the relationship <laughs> started. Okay. So <laughs> I, I mean, I'll share more on that story mm-hmm. one time. Cause like yeah, I yeah. said, I am writing a New York times bestselling book called how to get out of the friend zone, but that's for another time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love uh, it. I, um, So basically I was moving from New York to Los Angeles and she was living in Tampa, Florida. And I mean, that's difficult. And for us, wait, so I'm not getting into tips right now. I'm just sharing Mm because, okay, no tips. Just (laughs) your story. I just want to encourage. I just can't, I can't. He's like, I'm just trying to love on people and bless the community. (laughs) It's so (laughs) difficult for me. Okay. So anyways, long story short. Uh, she was in Florida. I was in Los Angeles and we, I would, I would fly in at least once a month to spend time with her. And that's how we started dating. But I had actually had to loop her into dating me. I had to trick her into dating me. Dude, the classic trickeroo. <laughs> it's, 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 it's the old bait and switch. Um, basically it's <laughs> old, bad. so bad. <laughs> Dude. It, oh, wait, the old date and switch. Oh, my oh wow. Gosh. <laughs> Cause basically I was trying to Ooh. date her. We've learned everything from the podcast today, boys. Yeah, we really see you next week. (laughs) (laughs) So I was trying to date her. And then I told her like, hey, I'm actually because her and I stayed friends. And I uh, throughout the whole years of us, you know, just being friends. And, you know, like I mentioned, friend zone status. But I basically reached out to her and I said, hey, I have a wedding in Florida. I would love it if you'd want to go with me. You know, it's friends, you know, just Mm -hmm. just friends. And she was like, oh, uh, yeah, sure. And she didn't know that the that the actual wedding was in Miami, which is about four hours south of Tampa. So anyways, <laughs> so had to I, drive. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a long drive. So we had a lot of quality time together. That's great. You like forced her into quality yeah, time because it's so hard to want to start a relationship <laughs> a long distance. Word. It's one thing if you're kind of dating and then like someone goes off to college, which I think is the case for a lot of people or they're like, you know, or their family moves or something. But we were going to start our relationship long distance. And that's a new level of scary because you're just like, wait a second. I don't even really know you that well. Am I going to yeah. invest all this time, resources, and, mm-hmm. and emotional, you know, uh, energy into this thing that, like, it's going to be hard? Well, I feel like sometimes that's better because you go in with that. No tips yet. 
You got to share your story. Oh, all right. Well, we, we did the same thing because yeah. Jess and I, we met in LA, but then she, three weeks later, had to leave to Australia. So we were doing- Down under. Good old, good old different hemispheres Bris across Vegas. the Pacific Ocean, Yeah, long distance. And that was a year of doing that, of traveling back and forth. And we were fortunate to kind of uh, be in the line of work that we're in where we could control our own mm -hmm. schedule and jobs and, yeah. and kind of do it from anywhere in a, in a sense. So, um, the longest we spent apart was six weeks, which is not long at all for having the, the distance that we did. Like she was, she was something like 17 hours ahead of me. And we were basically talking when I was going to sleep and she was waking up, we would like FaceTime for an hour or two or try and have a phone call or conversation or something like that. So, I mean, that's, that's basically the Cliff Notes version of my long distance with Jess. But I think it was now into the, the first tip. Mm -hmm. I really think it was beneficial for us going into the relationship already kind of being long distance and knowing that it was going to be long distance because mm -hmm. we knew what to expect and kind of went into it with that mindset of that being the struggle that we're going to deal with and that yeah. being what yeah. the battle is going to be rather than kind of dating before and then long distance coming in as an, a factor that we both weren't aware of and kind of shaking up the whole relationship. Cause I feel like you hear of that a lot where people they're dating before and then long distance mm -hmm. actually distances their hearts. Yeah. You know? Oh, wow. Mm. Quote me on it. But there's the other quote <laughs> that distance makes the heart grow fonder. I know that's true. And so there is, there are times where right now, you know, I'm down here in Boca recording with you and Tori is up in, you know, in Tampa area. And I'm like, dang, like, I haven't seen my wife in like 24 hours. I'm like, I wonder what she's mm -hmm. doing. Like, I wonder if she's thinking about me. And, but yeah. because we live together and we work together, it does create, like, you do get used to being around each other. Mm -hmm. But then when you're apart, you start to develop that, like, oh man, like, I would love to be around them. And I guess that's kind of how we feel about Zach right now. Right I know, right, dude. <laughs> but it, it is knowing the, or, or approaching it in a very intentional way mm -hmm. to knowing that you're constantly going to communicate. And I guess really just comes down to being on the same page and, and having that mm. purpose in common with the person that you're with. Yeah. So you're battling and fighting for the same thing rather, rather than kind of allowing life to happen to you. You're trying to attack life together. Yeah. I am. Um, so, I've got another question. Can I, can I, yeah. oh, so you, yeah. you no, 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 no. Yeah, Hit us with another. We want to hear your dude. voice act. Yeah, I just want to ask, so given all that, what kind of expectations did you have to set with each other? <laughs> Not you two together, with your significant others. <laughs> For Chad and I's when long distance going, relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what kind of expectations did you have to set? Because I think... For me, thinking about you guys doing long distance, I'm like, dang, I like I was sleeping on Chelsea's couch for like a year. <laughs> like I was the opposite of long distance, you know what I'm saying? Like it, and so I, I'm like, how do, what kind of expectations? How do you manage uh, I guess the emotional roller coaster that it could be? Because I know for me, when I was feeling bad, I just hung out with Chelsea and it really fulfilled a lot of that for me. Mm, must have so been nice. How did you guys navigate that? Wouldn't it be nice? Do, 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 do. <laughs> so I don't want to just tackle this one real quick, but I just want you both to know that I just created a bullet point list of tips for long distance dating. Dude, I saw you as I was talking, you're just like looking at me, just but you're then. typing on your phone. You I, can both. Both. I can do it. <laughs> I can do it. I uh, I can absolutely, I can make eye contact. Okay. So my head. before you jump into that yeah. and just like mm -hmm. crush the game, um, I just to answer your question, it was a very intentional mindset. And I have mentioned this on previous podcast about like the trust Jess and I had to build and, and her understanding my baggage and my past and knowing the trust issues that I had dealt with and that have kind of creeped up into who I was and my approach on relationships and how she was actively doing things to combat those insecurities that I had. So I could understand that I could trust her in the same way with long distance we were approaching that in a way where we fully knew what was going on in each other's lives. So we could understand that we trusted each other. Yeah. She would recap me on her day. I would recap, you know, her on my day and, and just kind of be really open and transparent. And even throughout the day, be sending little text message. Even if they were asleep, you send that text message 
of of like, oh, I'm going to do this now. So when she wakes up, she can kind of see that you're checking in with her, even when she's asleep. Like they're getting the timestamp of when you're sending the text, just so they know. That's they sweet. kind of have this log, I guess, of mm-hmm. of you just wanting to kind of update them and communicate with them and and mm-hmm. be fully Stay transparent present. with what you're doing. And it's really about building that trust because that's what makes long distance so hard is the trust aspect because you don't know if you can trust that person or if they're talking to someone else or whatever it is. So really having that open line of communication is key and and really nurturing that intentionally. Yeah, I think uh, Gabe is actually going to open up about his trust issues with Jess after this break. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Listen, yo, you threw me under the bus before that ad break. I don't have, I don't have trust issues anymore, no. bro. Just squash them, dude. No, you're chill. You guys chill. have a super healthy relationship. I was just teasing. I, um, I don't know if you all oh, noticed, man. but we're trying to make the ad breaks kind of funny. We, we're doing we, our best. We try to put each other on the spot with it. By the way, Zach, you need to pull one on us. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about how I could do it before, but we were on such a good roll. I didn't want to mess up the flow. Oh, okay. You know well, then I mess us up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chad just threw everything off. I guess if it makes you feel any better, one of us is going to mess us up, and so might as well be you. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if we're going to yeah, get I'll messed up it. regardless, yeah, you know that's true. Mm-hmm. One of us has got it. So, so Zach, can hit. you that's repeat true. that question for me one one time? That way I can answer it succinctly. For sure. Succinctly. I, I yeah. So the question was, um, what expectations did you have to set with each other, dude? I mean, honestly, I just. I'm going to echo what Gabe said is you just have to communicate really effectively and be intentional Mm -hmm. because it's one of those things where, and and that, that doesn't stop after long distance, Mm -mm. but it just needs to be, you need to be hyper aware of it when you're doing long distance, which takes me to bullet point. Number one. Oh, let's go baby. (laughs) Bullet point number one, (laughs) which is let's get it. Long distance relationships can be awesome, but you need to accept the hardships that they, that they bring. Mm. And so honestly, I think one of the reason Write it down. I think one of the reasons why Tori and I have such a a great marriage thus far, I'm not just trying to brag on us, I'm just being honest, Mm -hmm. is because we put in those hard yards long distance where we couldn't just be all over each other physically. We had to learn how to talk as friends. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? We had to learn how to sacrifice for each other. I mean, you know it better than we do, but different time zones make it difficult. I was waking up at her lunchtime right? Or Mm -hmm. she was going to bed at my dinner time. It's Mm -hmm. very difficult whenever you're working different jobs to sacrifice and plan different things. But the groundwork that you put in whenever you are in a long distance relationship can literally be one of your greatest assets to have a healthy Mm -hmm. relationship once you are in the same, you know? Yeah. And I, I think in that, in that vein with what you're saying is, is you need to put in the full time and energy and if you, if you don't, it's not going to work. So you yeah. kind of need to be aware of like, if you don't want to put in that energy for this long yeah. distance relationship, is that person right for you? Yeah. If and, you're not willing to do that, you yeah. know, it's a question you kind of got to ask yourself. And it's kind of what you're saying where you need to continue that effort after you are married. Mm-hmm. But that's one of the things that I think people can get wrong is that whenever they're dating, it's just exciting. You know, mm-hmm. there's someone new, this is fun, whatever. Then you get married and the person's around all the time. Then you forget to date. You forget to be intentional with each other. You forget to pursue each other because now they're just there, mm-hmm. right? And so I think that that's one of the most special parts about long distance is that you do have to plan your date nights. You have to like, Tori and I would do FaceTime dates, you know, and we also set really healthy boundaries, which is, by the way, step number two to have a point number two, baby, point let's two. go. Set up boundaries. Tori and I would, we would not go longer than three weeks without seeing each other. Now, of course, we were just across the continental US. We wouldn't, we didn't have to just, go to Australia, you know? Just. But no, I mean, it was far, but it wasn't yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know. But also, you guys were in a position where you could travel as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and what's cool is, is we, but we committed to it. And mm-hmm. then God showered favor on us. It was crazy. Mm. You know, I have an agency in Florida. It's where I started yeah, modeling. Yeah. And then, like, out of nowhere, I started booking work in Florida every single month. And no way. not only was, I like having my flights paid for, but now I'm getting paid to come to Florida. And you weren't getting work before that? Not in Florida. No, No I was working out of New York and LA. And then all of a sudden Florida picked up. just picked up. It was crazy, but it's also, you know, there's prayer there and Mm -hmm. we, I would have bought my flights anyways. Was it, did it pick up because you asked your agents like, yo, I want to be traveling back to Florida more? 
or it, just like it, both? It may, it was probably a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. I probably kind of planted the seed of just like, hey, by the way, we'd love to be back in town more and all that. And then God made it happen. Um, yeah, but God made it happen because it's like, you know, like obviously, um, like a client wants to book a local model mm -hmm. because they're going to save on a five hundred dollar flight and six hundred dollars of of hotels for mm -hmm. you know like three days, and so like. I, it's going to cost them more money. It's going to cost them probably an extra $1,200 to book me versus mm -hmm. a, a local guy. And so, yeah, that was, that, I mean, and that doesn't just happen. It was just crazy that you were booking them. Yeah, it was wow. absolutely crazy. But yeah, I mean, we had to That's set huge, up man. really healthy expectations. And one of those expectations is to realize that this is probably going to be a little bit harder than a normal relationship where you're just, you know, living in the same city or you're, or you're crashing on their couch. <laughs> Sad. But, you know but, they weren't even in a relationship then i know he was just hanging out dude, <laughs> dude one day zach woke up from the couch and he was just like i think i love her and he, they were they weren't even dating he was like dude, it was almost like that bro dude he sat her down <laughs> almost like that. he sat her down he looked into her on eyes, the couch next to her parents and he said this he said <laughs> the whole family was there he said chelsea <laughs> like i think i love you like, and it's literally what he <laughs> yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. He was just like, are you ready to do this thing? And they were just friends. I love that though. <laughs> oh my gosh. It all happened so on that couch, bro. You, you need to do her parents still have that couch. You need to like, get that, <laughs> you need to get that couch <laughs> yeah. from them and like, just have it in your office. Memorabilia. Or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is where it all happened. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> where it, all, it didn't all happen. happen. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, dude. Zach, do you have like another question for us or? Mm. Yeah, I do. And I'm going to make it a little bit about me if that's all right. Just Dude, be a little absolutely bit selfish. make it about you. So what are the similarities you're finding between a long distance relationship that with someone you, you want to pursue and friends that you have long distance friendships with? Mm, wow. Can you repeat that for me one more time? What, what are similarities course, yeah. between the long distance relationships we went through and then dealing with this long distance friendship? Oh, yeah. Bro, there's so many similarities. Go. And what, break, think, down, break down the 20 points that you've written just about this between him asking the question and, okay, and you well, answering. It actually <laughs> sets up point number four for the other no, question. No, oh, no wow. way. Wait, we, haven't even, we haven't even got to point number four, though. Did I'm, you do three? Well, it was set up boundaries, which is oh, like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, yeah, travel. Yeah. I, we wouldn't go with three weeks. Yeah, you never know? mind. Never mind. Um, I wasn't listening. Sorry, guys. Point number four, build a healthy friendship together. Mm. And so that's one of the parts that a lot of people that, get twisted on. That looked like it was so planned. It, w it wasn't planned, but look at <laughs> Not us. Not even planned. Look at this. God's working. Yeah. God's moving. Holy Spirit, <laughs> that you? <laughs> He's knocking. Hello. <laughs> so, oh my um, gosh. So I think that's one of the reasons why people don't enjoy long distance relationships is because they're expecting it to be something that's not meant to be. Mm -hmm. Obviously you're not going to get your freaking physical stuff going because you're not around each other, mm -hmm. but people are like, mm -hmm. they're feeling lack of that. And then they project that into their relationship. But if you're like, oh, okay, well, if you just look at the relationship for what it is right now, you can build that friendship, which is imperative. Mm -hmm. And because whenever you start off as friends, like what Tori and I did or what I, I, you guys, you guys just jump straight into it. But Zach and Chelsea were friends. Mm -hmm. And whenever you do that, you, you have this really healthy form of communicating and respecting and trusting each other that that goes beyond just a, a romantic relationship because like, oh, wow, I value this person in my life, even if we're not romantically involved. Yeah. Yeah. And what I was going to say mm -hmm. regarding like Zach specifically, I think, and we're both aware of this is that we kind of need to shower him with yeah. encouragement, mm -hmm. which is a different <laughs> form of loving him when all we can really do is verbally sure. communicate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where when you're in person, you can just be hanging out with each other and just that time that you're spending is showing that you want to be around that person. Right. Or when you yeah. see them, you hug them and give them a huge hug. Mm -hmm. But we have to be intentional with, with Zach, knowing that he's not physically here yeah. and part yeah. of this. And like, it sucks for everyone. Yeah. And we know that yeah. he kind of, is feeling I'm talking to him like he's not yeah, listening. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> him, that guy over yeah. there. Yeah, but that's something we have to be really uh just hyper aware about. And and even even legit, like off like to be fully real, like off some of these sometimes we will end a podcast here and um Zach will like mention something of like just kind of like being bummed that he's not with us and stuff. Yeah. And we're just trying to encourage him, like, dude, you're killing the game. Yeah. 
you're Appreciate carrying that. the team on your back, like especially with all the editing and stuff yeah. that you're doing for the podcast and everything. So um, just really, really being intentional with that and knowing what, knowing the ways that you are able to love someone in the situation that you're in and really leaning into those wow. when you can't do the ones that you can't that I totally like butchered the end of that. No, you're fine. Well, that's that's that so I just good. made up. But so do you, do you want to take like 20 seconds and just shower Zach with encouragement real quick? <laughs> no, Bro, no, we don't need Zach, to do that. You're that's killing so sweet. The Zach, you're one of the hardest working people I've ever met. You're carrying the God, team on your back. Me cry. I love how much you value friends. You guys, keep, do keep those dimples are killing so me. Bro. Those, yeah, Come on, keep smiling. You you are an incredibly humble and <laughs> you're so talented and passionate. Your talent level is out of this <laughs> world. Actually, <laughs> legit though. Yeah, I know where this, yep. we're kind of joking yep. around, but dude, like, I'm not joking. It, no, I know oh. <laughs> we're not, but it's kind of like a little funny thing. But when I when I tell people about you and they're they're like, oh, what is Zach like? Like I'm like, dude, he is one of the most talented people mm -hmm. I know, oh, hands wow, down. Man. Have you ever heard that quote that you can be a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Yeah. You ever heard that? Yeah. Zach, Zach is, is a master, master of, of everything, yeah. right? <laughs> no, he's literally is a master of everything. It's, he's like, I know how to film. Uh, I'll light the stuff. Oh gosh, also, dude. I'm cutting together the audio on the podcast. Oh, by the way, I'm a music producer and a musician. Yeah. And I play the guitar and piano and I sing. And I'm an awesome friend guys. and awesome husband. Oh, and, and you and need graphic design work done? Guys, I can do that for your company. Say no more, fam. <laughs> You're messing with me. I got you. Oh my gosh. Anyways. Well, I, I gotta say, I, I feel like I need to add. I need to add. I, I, this has <laughs> okay. become a big love fest, but I'll take it. It's like, <laughs> but I just want to add, like, I feel you wanna, very you wanna encouraged add, to have. You want to add with oh, a break? God. To my own <laughs> stuff. Oh God. I saw where that was going, dude. That was good. Oh good. my gosh! <laughs> you you want to add break? break? Oh my gosh! Gabe. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. All this right, Zach. Guy. Now that we're back, you you keep going. We're back. Yeah, yeah. I just want to <laughs> add that, like, I feel everything you guys said and all the points that you made, even about long distance with your significant others, felt so true about what you guys do for me. Like your intention and your ability to make me feel like involved in your world, and it, it means when you guys call. And I hope you never think that you're like, are we telling? Like, are we? Given Zach too much information or whatever. But I love when Chad calls and like, dude, here's the house update. He's like at the house. And, mm -hmm. and for me, that means so, so dang much because I wish that I could be there to experience kind of the overwhelming joy yeah. that you guys are going through in those moments. Mm -hmm. And there's also times like Gabe, like, you know, and Chad as well, but there's a few times that you've been like going through some real rough stuff and it's like you just call them and we just kind of like sit there for a little bit and we just kind of like unpack friends we don't first. even dive deep it's just we unpack the feeling mm -hmm. you know and though that means so much to, just as much to me as all the nice things you guys are saying that you actually involve mm -hmm. me in your in your day-to-day -day when like that's a that's a lot of hard work it's easy to involve someone you live next door to but mm. it's a lot of hard work to go, hey, on my phone, there's a dude that we like to hang out with and he's one of our good friends, one of our best friends, and we're going to include him. And it, and it means yeah. a lot and it makes me feel... It's actually the thing I struggle with the most <laughs> because I, I said to Chels the other day, I was like, it's crazy that I have so many incredible friends in Brisbane, but I feel like I'm missing a piece of me with my friends in L in Well, you guys were in LA, in Florida, yeah. Yeah. in the US. And so, wow. yeah, I think... There's something incredible that, you know, one, there was a time where like pen pals at school, were, like the thing, do you guys ever have a pen pal at school? And it's like, I was homeschooled. So no, but I, I, I know his mom is. was his pen pal. <laughs> like dear mom, <laughs> how is it but, you know, on the other side of the wall? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, legit, right? Well, there was a time where I'm like, wow, this is incredible. We can like we're every four weeks. And now it's like, we have full blown best friendships over. Yeah technology and and i think we're going to be the first generation that really has to understand and battle that because there is something really important about physically being with each other mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so i think if you're going to be have these long distance this is me trying to like link in my own tips somehow because no, i the, do didn't it. have a long distance relationship but lay it on us i think if you're going to have a long distance relationship there is got to be some intention that hey one day we're going to get to do life together it's going to be really hard to do a long distance relationship without that end game you know bro that brings um, me to tip number five bro you're a genius. i'm not Gosh, kidding you dude. this is tip number five i i, do I show this i don't know you, you just showed it, it to me oh yeah but it's just like be intentional and i wrote be intentional on dates but just be intentional in general mm -hmm. i love that it's like insane, and I, I i love that you actually reminded me of, of that zach because 
I forget because we talk about business stuff so often and we do it in such a friendly way. We feel like that can, I feel like sometimes that can substitute actually being friends. And like, that's, that's not a substitution. We talk you're, and you're talking about, we talk about business stuff, not like on the podcast, like when we're just communicating yeah. with yeah. each other, mm -hmm. it's all about like the podcast and prompt us yep. and, oh, we're working on this. I got these topics that people submitted yep. over, check the Google drive because there's a lot of like business mm -hmm. talk that happens <laughs> yeah. for sure. But it's not just exclusively friend check and hang out. Mm -hmm. And so it, it actually was a good reminder of me to be like, yo, show me scout. How are you and Chelsea doing? Mm -hmm. Hey, here's the house that Tori and I are doing. Like this is what you guys do. It's, it's not like you don't do that, but I feel you. It's good to be intentional. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it, uh, regarding like actual, like a romantic relationship is um, for Tori and I, we really had to set aside that time where it's like, Hey, this is going to be our FaceTime date. You know, this mm -hmm. is like, this is going to be it. Because again, if you think it's just going to happen naturally, it doesn't, you have to work at it. But like, it takes work, but it shouldn't feel like work. And I just want you to feel okay with that. Like, mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with putting in work at something. There's nothing wrong. Because you know how my now wife feels about me? Because she saw how hard I worked for her. Mm -hmm. She's like, wow, he respected me so much. He pursued me passionately across, you know, thousands of miles. He was so intentional with him putting aside all distractions to focus on me alone. That's the thing though, dude. Everything in life takes work. Yes. Everything. Like people, there's this weird, like people realize like, yeah, it takes words. To, it, it takes work to mm -hmm. raise your kids right. It takes work to have good friendship. But a lot of people don't even, th there's like this idea that relationships don't, like good relationships, like the best mm -hmm. relationships mm -hmm. don't need work because it's all natural chemistry and this False. Really fantastic. False. False. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Fake news. Anyways, I feel, like, I feel like you're about to rant and I love it. No, go off. I'm not. I mean, you I'm not off. about to rant. I'm basically ending my point. I'll go off. Bro. No, I'm not about to rant. That I'm basically, I'm concluding my point here, but everything takes work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everything in life, if you want to do it well, it takes work. And if you want to have a healthy relationship, it's going to take work. It's going mm -hmm. to take, I was told one time um, that you want to have, as a husband, you want to aim to have a PhD in your wife. And I Ooh. may have mentioned mm -hmm. this on the podcast before. No, I didn't. Okay. Oh. Well, I'm mentioning it, I'm, I'm mentioning no, it now. So. Yeah. You want to aim to have a PhD in your wife. You think you're going to get a PhD by not putting in any work? No. You need to flip and hustle and learn and study and understand who this Dang. person that is that you're with, know what makes her tick, know what she likes, know what she doesn't like, understand these things about her so you know how to best serve her. Can you give a little practical example of how you've done that in your relationship? <sighs> Just a small little tip. So I know that Jess loves words of affirmation mm -hmm. and I know at the end of the day, she loves to catch up. And a lot of times I would just like, we'd lay in bed, maybe turn on a show or I'd read a book mm -hmm. or whatever. And then that was like, we go in bed, but she would always try and talk to me. Mm -hmm. And then we got to a point where, and, and it was half of me realizing it, half her kind of like desiring it and asking for it. Mm -hmm. And we developed a practice where basically, and it's more on me, mm -hmm. where I had to develop that habit. Yeah. Shout out to our last podcast. <laughs> but I had to develop the habit of when we lay down in bed at night and we both are finally there, spending however long it is, however long she needs, whether it's 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, just talking with each other, catching up about the day, and just having that conversation. And that's become a habit literally every night when we get into bed, unless there's some random thing, maybe she's still editing a video because it's you know, do because of a brand deal the next day or mm -hmm. whatever it is. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to bed then if you're going to hustle till 2 a.m., yeah. like whatever. <laughs> you make the cash, babe. But <laughs> um, yeah, uh, most nights, most seven nights out of the week, we lay down into bed and we'll talk for a bit and just catch up on the day. And I know that, I know how much she appreciates that. She loves yeah. that. And sometimes she'll like get into bed, like say I'm whatever, fiddling with a book or something kind of like yeah. reading through or I'm like scrolling through YouTube because we may like watch a video or two yeah. and I'm already in bed and then she like gets into bed after doing her nighttime routine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Chad, Chad gets it. Um, yeah. She gets into bed. Then I'll like put down what I'm doing and I'll turn to her and I'll be like, okay, so let's talk. And then she like has that like little smile on her face. That's adorable. You know what I mean? Like has that smile on her face, like giggling half like you're ridiculous 
joke sort of thing, but yeah. understands why I'm doing yeah. that, you know? Yeah, which that's actually point number eight where we didn't get to six, uh, <laughs> six, six, six to seven, seven. yet. But um, point number eight would be go out of your way to make the person feel valued which is basically mm. living outside of yourself and realizing like, hey, instead of this moment, I'm only going to think about myself. I'm going to put myself into that person's shoes. And like mm. with Tori all the time, my girl forgets to eat. I don't know who on <laughs> earth forgets to eat. You were talking about, bro, <laughs> I do sometimes. If I'm in the zone. You need prayer. I know. Is what you need. I'll take it. <laughs> Zach, do you forget to eat? Yo, if you're sending one up. Yeah, dude. I I'm know. sending one up for your boy. <laughs> dude, I'm like, how do you forget to eat? I love food so much. But anyways, you know, that's something that, I love to cook and I love to, to serve. And so I'm like, you know what? Like I could tell that she's like, hasn't eaten and she's already in work mode or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm going to think outside of myself, even though I won't eat until like 12 PM. Cause I do the intermittent fasting thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make her breakfast, like living outside of yourself mm -hmm. to make that person feel valued. And that's like, it's like, yes. Don't you want to make people feel special? Like mm -hmm. Gabe, like I would get stressed out if Tori wanted to have pillow talk with me every night. Cause that's going to make my brain run. Mm -hmm. that's going to like, that's going to turn my brain off. I need to turn my brain. I'm sorry. That's going to turn my brain on. I need to turn my brain off. Mm -hmm. But like the fact that you do that just to make her feel special and heard is so special. And mm -hmm. it's like going out of your way to make the person feel valued is a great long distance tip in terms of you can do that, you know, just through, you know, talking on the phone or sending them random letters once a month. Mm hmm. You know, do you remember whenever we first started the podcast boys? Oh my gosh. It, that is a great story. We, Zach, do you want to tell that? Yeah, Zach, go ahead. Oh, when we when we first did our demo podcast, is that yeah, 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 and then the letters. You remember that? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. No, I don't want to talk about it because I've been so slack with it, dude. And I don't know how well you guys have been like, but I've been slack with it. But when we first did uh, one one of our podcasts, when we were, we were trying to pitch it to iHeart, um, we did this whole, hey, we're gonna hold each other accountable, and we're gonna write letters. Was it once a month? It was once. No, a month. no, it was no. Two. It was. It was. Well, what it was we gonna do was it? we were gonna write. We were like, let's write. And these were these were like demo podcasts for. It's the, the lost episodes. These are lost episodes. They're in the vault Ooh. somewhere. We accept Venmo for them. <laughs> I'm kidding. By the way. I'm kidding. Oh my gosh. Anyway, we were um, we, we were getting to a conversation. It was about relationships and like mm -hmm. loving your wives and stuff like that. And we were like, we were talking about being intentional and writing letters mm -hmm. and stuff. And then That's we were right. like, yep. and then we were talking about accountability. And we and then in the moment we were like, all right, boys. We're going to be accountable, accountable to us in this moment. We're each, by the time we record the next podcast, which would have been in our yeah. head before the pandemic hit, it would yeah. have been like a few months by the time yeah. we met together and actually started the whole thing. Um, we said we want to write at least two, two letters yeah. each yeah. to our wives by the time the next podcast hit. And that mm. was, you know, that was thrown out, out the window because of, as, as far as the timeline and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that was the whole thing. I'm feeling convicted right now. My yeah, bad. I'm like, man, I need to. I literally, Jess doesn't know this. Maybe she's listening to this and whoops. I need to, I need to write a, let, a letter to her before she listens to this. This is actually good. I'm going to say it. So I'm yeah. convicted of it. I bought a little, uh, like a little uh, uh, letter mm -hmm. to like write her a letter. And it's been sitting in my closet. I haven't Dude, done it. I had so one I like of those did two. step one mm -hmm. where I have the letter. I have yeah. like the the note card, mm -hmm. and I just haven't done it. Wow, dang yeah. conviction. And so so that takes us to point number six. Six, because that's one, two, oh, wait, three, four, actually, five, eight, six, seven. Hold on, hold on. So actually, this is seven, not number six. Wait. So we <laughs> so we still have we st after I share this one, we'll have number six and we'll have number nine. All right. So there's nine tips to healthy relationships here that I oh, wrote. So now you're going backwards. You're going one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, eight, seven, six, nine. Yep, exactly. Perfect. Being so fine. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, you know, works because it's save your hard conversations for specific times. And so mm. that was one thing that Tor and I really needed to do is because because of the time change, it was really difficult to mm -hmm. have, you know, those conversations where maybe you're checking in emotionally or maybe I wasn't really active and talking to her one week and she felt neglected or vice versa, whatever. And then like she would be going to bed and then I would like bring something up. And it's mm -hmm. like, you have to be really intentional with when you have those tougher conversations. Cause you want to make sure both of you are in a, a healthy place to have a deeper conversation because you guys know this, that text can be taken out of context. Talking on the phone is so difficult. It's not like, you know, and Zach, it's like, even with us, this, like it's so difficult 
to have the podcast bring them f- through Bluetooth, which we love that we can do this, mm-hmm. but it's not the same as having them here, mm-hmm. you know? And so you, you want to be a little extra careful as you plan around those harder conversations, which mm-hmm. takes me to number. Don't, well, don't, I mean, to add on to that point, mm-hmm. don't have important conversations over text. Yeah, that's Just true. Don't. Mm-hmm. And if, it, if, if yeah, you're not able not. to have a call or FaceTime or something, mm-hmm. use the voice note feature because mm-hmm. there's so much, inflection yeah there's so much in the inflection and the tone of your voice and the way you say things yeah that that it, it carries weight mm-hmm. in the relationship it really does so text having serious conversations over text can be pretty damaging to a relationship so i just encourage you guys like not to yeah, do that it's not the move yeah yeah and so that takes me to what is it number is it number numbers s- no we just did six. we went eight seven six yeah okay <laughs> which is communicate effectively and i wrote kind of over communicate Mm-hmm. And because the nature of the long mm-hmm. distance relationship, you have to over communicate. Yes. You know, it's like you can't expect some, you can't expect what you do not express. And so you need to express yourself. You need to do it. <laughs> you know, you just yeah, have yeah, a parks and rec. And so for, <laughs> oh my God. for me, treat yourself, <laughs> treat yourself. Um, so that was a really so important good. one for Tori and I was just to make sure you're like, Hey, I know I had to cut this date night short. Are you okay with that? Like, mm. is, are you feeling okay? Like, you know, you kind of have to want to be a little bit more sensitive to that person and over communicate different situations. Just be aware of their feelings. Yeah. Be aware of them. Yeah. And, and, and understand then having that PhD in your, in your spouse or partner, understanding the way they tick and the way they mm-hmm. respond to things. And you, you, you know what I mean? Like you can approach a conversation knowing like, oh, what I'm going to say, she's probably not going to like. Yep. Like cutting a date short or something yep. like that. So like approach that with a lot of love and a lot of grace. Mm-hmm. And and in a way that can uh, like make it more palatable so the relationship isn't mm-hmm. tarnished in any way. And just, just so you got, you're still building the relationship and building that bond yeah. with each other and not, you know, kind of like jeopardizing things because of a lack of communication. Yeah. So I'm going to kind of wrap all this up. Is that cool? <laughs> yeah. So just to kind of recap a lot of those with point nine, I'm going to, I'm going to, well, I'm going to get, I'm going to end with point nine. Okay. Okay. Cause okay. it's going to sound really fancy. <laughs> so you obviously want to just recognize that long distance relationships can be awesome, but they also have a lot of hardships and you just got to accept them. Mm-hmm. You know, you just got to accept it. You do need to set up appropriate boundaries to, to establish and live inside of that, that long distance relationship. Focus on building a healthy friendship. You don't have to just worry about the lack of physical intimacy or chemistry that's there, but you just, you can really enjoy being friends with that person. Be intentional on dates, communicate effectively, and definitely over communicate. Save hard conversations for specific times and don't have them through text. Go out of your way to make the person feel valued. And lastly, point nine: seal the deal, baby. Lock it up. Seal the deal. Seal the deal. <laughs> Let's go. Make it happen. A lot uh, of the reason why Tori and great. I got engaged so quickly, mm-hmm. we had all the hard conversations. We weren't the same. We we couldn't same. just like be obsessed with each other. We were like, hey, how many kids do you want? Hey, how do you feel about this? How do you feel mm-hmm. about tithing? How do you mm-hmm. feel about like your involvement in the church? How do you feel about leading a small group? How do you feel about like, you know, our parents being involved in our relationship? How do you feel about mm-hmm. these things? And we had all the conversations. And I'm just like, dope, this girl's rad. Let's lock it up. Yeah, because then you really align and have your purpose in common. So you're able to attack all of these, mm-hmm. all the things that can be difficult and all the struggles and all the things that can cause pain in a relationship. You're able to approach them together and know that you're on the same team and you're linked arm in arm and you're headed towards the same goal and you're not pulling each other in different directions. And I think that is, is super key to really developing a strong long distance relationship. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this episode of Prompt Us. And remember, you can follow us at Prompt Us Podcast on Instagram. That's our handle, at Prompt Us Podcast. And that is where you can submit prompts that will be topics that we discuss in future episodes. Appreciate you guys tons, and we'll talk again in the next one.